we're talking Python uh, version 3, and uh, whenever you do programming, uh, an essential part of programming is the idea of being able to have different possible outcomes, different paths that your program can take. In order to do that, we do what's called conditional execution. It is the classic if, else, then kind of situation. Okay. So in our case, what we're going to do, is I'm just going to do it in the context of a program. So we're going to simulate the rolling of two dice, and we're going to total those two together. And so every time we run it, it's going to be random. Uh, we'll get some output to show what we rolled so we can test to see what's going on. And then we're going to, we're going to find out what they rolled. Was it a 7? If it was, we're going to say they won. If it was a 2, we're going to say they lost. And anything else uh, will just be a draw. Okay? And so we're going to keep it as simple as that so that we can talk about how do we do these kinds of if-else statements. Okay? So the first thing we're going to do is you're going to want to create a file in Python and you're going to want to save it. I'm calling this conditional execution test just because that's what we're doing. So go ahead, you want to save your file as a .py into whatever folder you save it as. So I've saved it into my Python folder where I have other Python files, called it conditional execution, and I'm just going to save my changes. Okay. Now eventually we're going to turn this into a full-blown dice rolling game of chance. Okay. But as I said before, we're going to simulate the rolling of dice, and for that we need random. So we're going to start with our import statements. The only thing we really need to import for this particular program is random. It's a library that is available in your download, but isn't readily available until you import it. And we're going to simulate the rolling of two die, two dice. I always get that mixed up. One is a, called a die and multiple is dice, okay? In case you ever wanted to know. So we're going to create a variable to capture this dice. So we're going to call it die one and we're going to have die two. And on each one, what we need to do is generate a random number. And every time this program runs, it could be a different number. So we're going to use the random module, random. We're going to put a dot. I'm going to write out rand range. Now, there's several different uh, functions that are part of the random module. The most commonly used one, one I see the most often, is rand range. And what it does is it's going to choose a range between 0 and the number, of, uh, the number you put in here. So if this were a six-sided dice, this would pick a total of six possible random numbers starting with 0. Okay, but there is no zero on a six-sided dice. So we're just going to add one to whatever that randomly chooses. Okay, so we're going to run it just like this. Die one equals random dot rand range six. We're going to add one to it, so it's, a to it's somewhere between one and six. We're going to do the same thing for the second dice. So the code looks exactly the same, only a different variable name. There we go. And we're going to add our uh, dice together. We're going to call it total. Okay. And we're going to print the outcome. Okay. So to print the outcome, it's going to be a print statement. And this is going to take us a couple lines to build. And we're going to use our newfound output skills. And we're going to put the little placeholder here using the little curly brackets. Like so. And we're going to put format die1, comma, die2. Now, there's one little thing you need to do on this statement. When we run out of room on a line, you don't want to keep going out, out, out. It, it, it can be kind of a pain. But we're not done with our print statement. So what we're going to do is we're going to do the plus sign concatenator. So we're going to take this string, and then we're going to add another string. So you put the plus sign at the end, and then we're going to do a little thing called an escape, a backslash. 
When we hit enter, you'll notice it puts the cursor right under the other quotation mark. Okay. So then we're going to put, now we had a space over here, so we don't need a space on here. So we're going to put for a total of, like so, period, do the format function, and we're going to put total. Now, our print statement, or our print function is not over. We had this opening curly bracket. And we have a closing one, but this one is just for the format, so we actually have to add one more. So we add one more closing um, parenthesis is what I meant to say. Okay, so let's go ahead, save our changes, and run it. And so I'm going to type F5. I'm going to click OK to save my changes. I'm going to run it. So we rolled a 6 and a 5 for a total of 11. And now you can see the random dice roll worked. And we're going to run it a few times just to see the different kinds of outcome we get when we run it. So that time was a 4 and a 6. Click back on the window, run it again, 4 and a 3 for a total of 7. So after three rolls, we ended up with the 7. Now, like I said, we're going to kind of run it, simulate it kind of like the craps game where uh, you've seen those movies, right, where they're like out in the alleyways in the 40s and they're all huddled over and they're rolling the dice and it's a very kind of a shady looking place or whatever. Well, we're going to simulate that, but no one gets hurt because there's no gangs involved and uh, no one's going to lose any real money. We're just going to lose a little bit of coding time, so uh, don't, don't feel bad. So what we really want to do is we want to, we're going to want to use the rules of the game. Now, the most basic rule that you've probably seen is if you roll a 7, it means uh, you win. If you roll a 2, it means you lose. We're just going to keep it that basic. Now, there's way more to the game than that. But for now, we just want to find out, did we roll a 7, in which case we're going to say we won, or did we roll a 2, in which case we're going to say we lost, and if anything else gets rolled, we're going to say it's a draw. So what we want to do is we want to check, and we check using the if statement. I'm sorry, the if keyword. If. Okay. So what we want to find out is what is total equal to? And we've got two options for doing it. We could put the variable on the left and the value on the right, or we can reverse it. Okay. Um, for now, we're just going to keep it as we would say it in English. So we might want to say, is total equal to 7? So what we're going to do is instead of is, we write if, because that's the keyword, and we put total. Now, we need to have two equal signs. The two equal signs is to compare. We're comparing total to 7. Okay. Then we put a colon there. See that? Now, in other programming languages, you would use parentheses and curly brackets, but in Python, it's just like you see here. When I put the colon and I hit enter, my cursor's automatically tapped, okay? And on here, we're going to print, you win, okay? And that's all we're going to print, okay? So the first thing we do is we're just going to test, is it a 7? If it is, we're going to print, you win. If it's not, it's not going to add that additional line of code. You're not going to see that output. So we go ahead and run it, saving our changes, of course. And the first time we rolled it, we rolled a 3 to 4 for a total of 7, and it says we win. Yay. All right. We go back, we run it again, and now we want to see a different output. This time, we rolled a 5 and a 3 for a total of 8, and you will notice we did not win. This was never run. And the reason why is because anything that's tabbed over after our statement here only gets run if this right here becomes true. Okay? So we call that a truth statement. Is total equal to 7? And either total is equal to 7 or it's not equal to 7. Okay? So if it is, we run what's in what's indented underneath it. We call that a boolean expression. A Boolean expression is an expression that either evaluates to true or false, okay? So either total is equal to 7 or total is not equal to 7, okay? The sooner you get this understood, the easier your programming is going to be. 
The reason why is not only is conditional execution and, and the if, elif, else statements are based on this, but all while loops are based on this too. And this is true of every programming language. Every programming language has this in it. And without it, programs would be very boring because there would be no possible different variations. And we need that. Okay, now the other thing I want to point out is you will note we call these code paths. And there are two paths we can go. We can either go a, a route where we win or we could go a route where we don't. Okay? In this case, there are two possible paths. Okay? But this you win only gets printed when total is equal to seven. And this is not going to tell people much if it's not equal to seven. So what we're going to do is we're going to do an else statement. Now, else basically only gets run if this did not evaluate to true. So if total becomes anything other than seven, whatever is under the else block will be what's printed. And of course, in this case, you did not win. Very basic, right? So there's our code. We've got our two checks. Now we, have, we still have two possible outcomes. But in both cases, we're going to get some output. Either we won or we did not. So I run it. Click OK. And we did not win this time. And I could run it a few more times till we did win. But for now, let's just trust that it's going to work every time. Now, in many times, that's all you need in a game or a program. Maybe you just need an if and else statement. A good example would be that uh, the flipping of a coin, right? If you flip a coin, it's either going to be heads or tails, right? There's one or another. In that case, an if else is probably pretty good to do, and, and I'll show you that later. Okay. But for now, let's what if we have possible different outcomes? So we have a win, we also have a loss or a draw. So we're gonna change it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna write a new statement called LF. Now, LF means if the first one was not true, is this one true? So we're gonna put LF total is equal to two and we're going to print in this case they call that snake eyes you lose all right game over man all right so now we have three possible outcomes it's either a seven or it's a two or it's something else that makes sense right it, if you read it it almost it almost speaks of itself. So we did not win on a 10. And we run it again. And we also got a 10. So we're just going to run it a few times to see if we can get all of our outcomes. There. We got a 7 and we won. So we have a 1. We, have a, we did not win. Actually, we need to change this. We'll put it's a draw. Now eventually, we're going to write a program that forces the user to keep rolling until they win or lose. Sort of up the ante. Now, I could ro run this a long time before I get a two. It's actually not very probable to get a two on the first roll. Now, I'm wishing I had, I had decided to teach you how to do while loops. Because that we could just loop until we get a two. Well, I could be doing this a long time, and so let's just cheat a little bit. Just to test it out. You got it. Great. I didn't. And look, look. Hey, there we go, Snake Eyes, you lose. Okay, now we've proven that we can get all of these. Of course, through random number generation, um, it can take a while. It eventually will uh, pan out, because you can see earlier up here, we rolled a one and a two. We were almost there. Okay, so this is basically the essence of conditional execution.